Hi, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer all your questions dealing with oil painting. All right, Clover Honey says, I really appreciate this video, but I would ask if you have any specific exercises to try. Like you said, materials aren't free, but time is valuable too. I paint finished stuff, but I want to improve. So do you have any specific recommendations for painting exercises to do? Maybe something that focuses specifically on value or color relation. Please don't tell me to make a color wheel. I understand color, but how do I effectively practice using it? That's a good question. A uh, Probably the best exercise I've ever done, best exercise I've ever done specifically for value was one of the first things I ever did in oil painting class, which was my instructor, he took a bunch of just random colors, just like random colors straight out of the tube. And he put about 10 of them on the palette in just a random order. And he had like a still life setup that I was painting. And he said, okay, for the next five minutes, you're only gonna paint with this color. And then after that five minutes is up, you're gonna have to go on to this next color. Another five minutes, another color, another five minutes, another color. And they were in no particular order. Some you know, dark blue, light yellow, orange, red, burns like just random colors. And what that does is it forces you to understand value. So say if you get like an ultramarine blue, you have to find within the picture you're painting all the values that that ultramarine blue would be. Same thing when you go, like say if you went to a really light value, like a, a light yellow, you have to find everywhere in there that that light yellow would be. And it's cool because you end up with a very colorful, cool painting, but it really gets you to stop thinking about color and to start thinking about value. Because you have ideas about color that you think, oh, what color is gonna be darker, blue or yellow? It's like, well, it depends. I have like a really light sky blue and if I have like a really dark, you know, rich, you know, yellow ochre, the blue is going to be lighter than the yellow. So I highly recommend doing that exercise. Now, another exercise that you can do that I actually have uh, one of my students doing this month is to find a subject that if you painted it, you think it would take you three to six hours to do, but paint it in 45 minutes. Set a timer and say, I only have 45 minutes to paint this. Force yourself to paint it in 45 minutes. This is going to do a lot more than just help you see value and color because it's going to bring out what you truly know about about every facet of painting. It's gonna bring out what you know about drawing, what you know about value, what you know about color, what you know about handling the paint. Because when you're pressed for time, you stop overthinking everything. You stop analyzing everything. You stop trying to think of all the information you've learned from this teacher, that method, or this book, or this, that, and you just paint. And that's really how you should be painting. And this 45 minute exercise really opens your eyes to what you're capable of, what you need to work on, what you're strong at. And I think. A a lot of you will be surprised at how good you do and how much you actually get done and what it does i feel like the best thing it does is it gets you to stop being afraid of the paint you know you're forced to just really take control of the paint and just throw it on there you don't have time to work it around or gently put it on or be really detailed and this and that like you're throwing the paint on and you're in control and you got to do this in 45 minutes so please try that exercise everybody out there that wants to try it try it and let me know how it went in the comment section of this video all right next question comes from Casey Caban. How do you keep the colors from getting muddy when painting a la prima? I get this question a lot. You know, everybody seems to be fine like when you're painting and the paint dries and you layer and stuff like that. But when you're working wet into wet paint, it is all about paint thickness. Now I made a video on this, you know, I'll put a link to it above like painting thin to thick, you know, starting with thinner paint, you know, building the thicker paint. Like this is how I do a lot of my a la prima paintings, like all my portraits that you see, these little nine by twelves. A lot of those are done pretty much in one session, like one sitting. Sometimes there's two, I'll, you know, if I get tired, I'll wait till the next day, but the paint's still wet the next day. And I feel like the key to this that people don't understand is how much you work a painting as you're painting it. You know, like how many times you'll go over a certain section manipulating it, pushing the paint, pulling the paint, you know, applying the paint. As I paint a portrait, I'm constantly molding it and, and, and changing it like right up until the very end. You know, I never get married to like any decisions that I make with it. Like if I paint, you know, the eye area, I'm not 100% locked in, like I'm never gonna change. Like I could totally change it. I could change that five minutes before I'm done. You know, go over with a big thick brush stroke of paint and change up the angle, this or that. You get to a point where it really is like an instinctual thing. And I think that things that you can do to help you get to that point is certain basic things like use a big brush, like use a brush bigger than you think you need. Like I use a brush to block out my subjects and get the big shape and to, you know, lay on the paint for a very long time. Like I keep using that big brush as long as I can. Another thing is putting out enough paint on your palette. Like this might sound weird, but like I've noticed that people use what they put out. And if you put out just a little bit of paint on your palette, you're only gonna put a little bit of paint on your canvas. And I know oil paints 
you know, aren't cheap. You know, I had an instructor once that said like, I know like, you know, you pay for this oil paint and you don't want to waste it, but you have to be okay with wasting some paint, like to have some leftover paint on your palette that you're going to throw away. It's just the cost of painting correctly. Now, another thing that might be getting in the way of you controlling the paint you want to is the type of brush you're using. I recommend using, you know, a pretty sturdy, thick bristled brush. You know, synthetics can work too, but just make sure you're using a brush that can handle thick paint and that can apply the paint properly onto the canvas. So there's certain brushes that, you know, they can't really hold a lot of paint. So you're trying to paint over, you know, thick paint on your canvas, but you're using a brush that can't really hold thick paint. So you're trying to lay on, you know, thin paint over top of thick paint and that, that could be getting in your way. Another thing that might be happening is you might be using too much medium. You know, don't be afraid to use just straight paint, especially if you're using like better quality paint, like, like gambling oil colors, you know, they spend a lot of time getting that paint to a certain consistency for a reason. And I find myself more and more just not using much medium for like the second half of my paintings. And I'm just using straight paint. And this goes back to putting out enough paint on your palette, you know, because if you have medium, you're going to need to use less paint and that might feel more comfortable, but really, you know, you can't be afraid to be mixing, you know, big pools of paint without any medium, because with the medium, it's going to really loosen it it's going to be hard to build up the paint and paint over stuff when you're you got a lot of medium in it yeah there's definitely certain stages of the painting when you're probably going to be using medium but at a certain point you're going to want to get that texture of the paint that's you know more tacky and, and more thick so that when you lay down your strokes it's more of like like almost like laying down a sticker like putting down a sticker when i talk about how i paint i like to think of it almost in two different sections you know one section i consider i'm moving the paint which is you know thinner paint with paint that i'm putting paint down you know i'm pushing it around with my brush I'm, I'm changing it i'm molding it and at a certain point i start applying the paint which is i lay down a brush stroke and i have the full intention of leaving that brush stroke how it is now i might put one over top of it later or others next to it to change you know how it's reading so it's really helpful to be aware when you're moving paint opposed to when you're applying paint so if you're saying like oh yeah chris but when i try that when i try and you know apply the paint my brush stroke mixes in with the paint that's on there and i don't get a clean stroke again that's linked back to the thickness of your paint and that's because the paint that is on your brush is thinner than the paint that is on your canvas so again like you fix that by working thin to thick so the paint that you're putting down with your brush is going to be thicker than the paint that you already have down there. So this question's a little hard to answer without actually seeing you paint. There's a multiple of things that you could be doing that could be causing this. So hopefully I hit on some things that can help you. All right, next question is from Holly. It says, great advice. I'd love to hear more about selling work. All right, where do I begin? All right, so this can be a wide range of scenarios. So I'm going to assume that you paint, you have paintings that you can sell, you are open for commissions. You know, how do you get people to want to pay you to paint? Number one thing you got to do is put your work out there as often and as much as possible in the best light. I've been doing commissions, you know, since I was 17, I put no effort into marking myself or even trying. It was just, I would paint and people, my friends, my family would see it and be like, I want you to paint this for me. Will you paint this for me? I'll pay you. I was like, oh, okay. You know, it just came from putting myself out there. And with social media and the internet, that's easier than it's ever been. So the more that you can put your artwork out there that it can be seen, you know, this can be Instagram, this can be Facebook, this can be Reddit. If where you live, there's a place where you can paint publicly. Like there's like an Italian cafe that like, couple times a week I'll go and I'll paint live because it's a great way to one get out of the studio and actually socialize with people and two to get people to see your work and build relationships with clients this could even be painting in plain air you know go out to a park that you like what you know and have people see you paint like you'd be surprised at how many people will stop you and be like oh do you have a card that's really great are you gonna sell that so just get your work out there as often as possible also this is gonna mean you painting a lot for free or for very little money there have been many times when i have done a painting for free for somebody because i knew them having that painting and that 
that painting being out there and the people that will see it is worth me painting it and will bring me future business. Like if you have a relationship with somebody or know somebody who has a large social media following and you can say, hey, I'll do a painting for you if you promise to post it and then you get people, you know, coming to you because they saw it in theirs and this and that, you know, that's how you build more eyeballs looking at your work. I feel like that's a huge thing that artists always overlook is they, they don't want to paint anything for free. You know, they have their, their price set and they don't want to change that. And really that's going off like old ways of thinking about pricing your work with galleries and stuff. And like, I get it. You know, they always say like, oh, price it high. You can always talk the person into bargaining going a little bit lower. You can't ever really bargain up to go higher and you know once you set that price you know now you're like that's the price like that's the level artist that you are now and people will see you that way it really if you're starting out like you really need to forget all of that the thing that's most valuable to you right now is exposure so you got to be willing to do stuff for practically nothing and that's where i think you really got to love to paint like you really got to love doing it. like i love doing it so much that like when it came time for me to do paintings for free or practically nothing. It wasn't a big ask. It wasn't a, a burden to me. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm still, I'm painting. Like I've been doing this for free my whole life. Like I don't need the incentive of money to like get excited about painting. Like if there's money attached, like great, that's a bonus in a way. So, you know, think of it that way. Like, like really think about what you're doing. Even if you're getting paid way below what you think you should be getting paid, just remember like you're painting for money. Most people in the world, vast majority of people in the world that are lucky enough to have a job, most of them probably don't like it near as much as you like painting. If you get somebody to pay you to paint, I don't care if it's five dollars, like that's awesome and that's a good step. Now the last thing I'll say about selling your art, always do the best you can possibly do no matter what it is i don't care if somebody gives you the worst photo of something dumb that you don't care about painting do it the best you can do because you don't know who's going to see that painting you don't know the opportunities that could come from that painting you don't know who's going to walk in that person's house and see that painting if that painting is really good they'd be like oh like who did that i want something like that so don't ever phone anything in. Don't ever just get something done to get it done. That's your work. Like you're gonna put your signature on it and that's you. That represents you, your quality, your skill, like who you are as an artist. Every single piece of work you put out there is a representation of you. You know, get excited about doing it. Even if it's something you don't wanna paint like or something that's challenging, get excited about the challenge of it. Like there's a lot of painters that don't like being told what to paint, but I don't mind that that much because I'm gonna see it as a challenge. You know, if it's, it's a if it's a photo or a picture that I don't think can make the greatest painting, like I'll try really hard, I'm like, no, I'm gonna make this a good painting. I'm gonna see this as a challenge. You know, anybody could say, oh, that, yeah, that's, I don't know if that's gonna be a good painting. You know, I don't know, you know, and just kind of do whatever and get it done. But I really wanna try and do it the best that I can because that's how you're gonna get better. And then you're gonna build that skill of being able to take not the best photo references from clients and make them good paintings, you're gonna develop that skill. So a year, two, three down the road, you're gonna get really good at that. And that's gonna bring you more clients. And that's gonna make you produce more paintings because you pushed yourself and you tried to make the best of every single painting instead of just going, ah, you know, yeah, I'll get it done, 200 bucks, I'll just get it done, get it out of here and then get back to work on what I wanna work on. Like, no, give it everything you got because what you get in return is so much more than whatever you're getting paid. All right, I hope that helped with the whole selling artwork question. Okay, so that concludes this week's Pain Talk. If you have questions that you want me to answer, leave them in the comment section of this video. As always, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, I'll offer those on my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also offer you this video, in this video, they both will change your life forever. Just pick one. You can't go wrong.